welcome to Viscount's organ tutorial series for 2019, which we're recording this year in the beautiful church of St Mary's, Whitney. I'm Francis Rumsey, organist and choirmaster here, and in this series I'll be discussing registration schemes for various styles of music with Jonathan Kingston. We're using a Viscount Regent 356 Physis based digital organ which offers a lot of registration flexibility over three manuals and pedals. We hope that you'll enjoy listening to our ideas about how to deal with music ranging from Basque chorale preludes through to franc and howls. The first tutorial in this year's series looks at how we might register two contrasting chorale preludes by J.S. Bach. The first one, Ich Ruf zu dir, is the only trio in Bach's Orgel Buchlein and is clearly marked for two manuals and pedals, which suggests a separate registration for the solo and accompaniment parts. So first of all, Jonathan, could you just play us a little bit of the opening of this piece to show us what you've got registered? Yeah, here? sure. So I have um, a cornet sound on the swell, albeit without the two foot on this particular instrument, so registers at eight, four, two and two thirds, and one three fifths, also with the tremulant, and the accompaniment uh, is played by um, a single eight foot flute on the grate, and uncoupled flutes at 16 and eight foot on the pedal. And um, so can we just hear the left hand and pedals on its own? Yeah, there? sure. Thanks, yeah. And um, is there any argument for using anything other than an eight foot registration there or is that just going to be too overwhelming. Again, it depends on the instrument, doesn't mm. it? It depends on the instrument and its effect on the solo. Um, on this particular organ, this seems to work rather nicely, and anything uh, with four foot or above would certainly be too intrusive. Um, the, uh, the, the, the chorale melody is exclusively in the right hand here, um, and the accompaniment would be rather too prominent, perhaps, because yeah. it is of, of a busier nature anyway, um, with, with any uh, stops at, at higher harmonics. Right, and could we hear it now played all together? Together, but without the tremulant, just yes. to hear the difference of okay. the cornet without the tremulant. Yeah, absolutely. I think I personally prefer it with. I mean, it gives it a bit more of a sort of plaintive quality, doesn't it? Indeed, yes, indeed. And that, of course, is totally down to sort of the artistic license of the, um, of the performer to choose. And is there an alternative here that we could try for a solo line on yep. top of that? Yeah, many, many possibilities. Uh, one could try uh, using um, a, a well-voiced diapason on the, on the grate, mm -hmm. uh, eight and four flutes with perhaps a twelfth. Um, on this particular organ, this has some very nice uh, delicate reeds that have been uh, voiced at the moment. So if we knock off the mutations and instead add uh, one of those, the oboe, uh, with or without the tremulant, again, is fine. Let's put it on to begin with. You can sort of compare like for like. Thank you. That's useful to know. Um, so that was a Vox Humana and an Oboe. In fact, mm. I drew, yes, mm. I, drew, I drew both. A Vox, the Vox just adds a little bit of, of, of keen readiness to the, uh, to, the, to the rounder sound of the Oboe. Um, uh, both, both registers working quite nicely there. We're now going to turn to a contrasting trio from a collection of chorale preludes, sometimes called the 18 or Leipzig chorales. Herr Jesu Christ, Dick Zu und Sven feels a bit more like a trio sonata than a chorale prelude to begin with, 
with the pedal part taking an integral bass accompaniment role. For the last third of the piece, though, the pedal line switches to take on a more traditional role, sounding the chorale melody almost verbatim. Like Ich Rufsudir, this one's also indicated for two manuals and pedals, but here both manuals are playing bright semiquaver figurations derived from the chorale and overlapping a lot in pitch. Neither hand has a solo chorale melody, so the first challenge for Jonathan is to decide on complementary registrations for the two manuals. Um, what have we got here, Jonathan, for the opening of this trio? Well, quite straightforwardly to begin with, we just have the, uh, the great and the choir set up with flutes at eight and four foot pitch. Um, the pedal I have uh, based on an eight foot line, the eight foot bass flute, um, and I've just coupled that up to eight and four foot flutes uh, and closed the box ever so slightly uh, on the swell organ there as well. Okay, well, can we hear the opening yeah. of this then? Thank you. Um, and that was 8 4 flutes. Um, what alternatives might we have here? Can we listen to an alternative? Yes, so on another piston here, I am adding the 12th to the great. So we have 8 and 4 foot flutes plus the 12th, which is, of course, based on a, a diapason scale um, metal pipe. So it will be quite prominent, but hopefully um, it, the, the flutes will still have enough body to support it. And the choir organ now has uh, a two foot piccolo added. Um, so we have eight, four and two on the choir and the pedal organ remains unchanged. So this will be a brighter registration. That's right. Yeah. And I'm gonna swap the hands round as well now. So the right hand goes onto the choir and the left hand goes up to the great. Lovely. And um, so there are three sort of verses to this chorale, but is there any argument for changing the registration at any point until we get to that final chorale in the pedals? Well, or? they're braver than I am if people want to try that, <laughs> because obviously uh, both hands and feet are going to be pretty well employed with playing the notes. Um, personally, I, I don't uh, change registration at all once I've started here, apart from uh, where the chorale melody enters the pedals. Um, I, I tend to stay with the, with the original registration um, uh, right the way through. Right, so if we skip on to where the, yep. the pedals come in then, um, if for the, uh, the last verse we end up with the pedals playing the chorale. That's tune. right, the cantus firmus here in the pedals. So would you like to hear that first? Yeah. So here it is um, as a solo entity. I'm just going to draw the eight and four foot uh, diapasons on the pedal organ. statement. Mm -hmm. um, now you could use those uh, stops if you wanted to in order to, 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 to give a little bit more prominence to the to the tune. Um, I however um, again stay on the swell organ where the um, uh, the pedals are already coupled up to and use the oboe uh, or the vox humana perhaps and also the clarion four foot. Bach was a great fan of using uh, four foot uh, reeds or four foot principal stops in order to give prominence to um, uh, pedal lines uh, which which bore the tune the chorale melody so um, we can try a bit of that now with the original yeah. eight and four registration uh, in the manuals thank you <laughs> Lovely, yeah, so it's a, a delicate um, read to bring out the pedal line. Um, and then we're sort of complicated again by the fact that the pedal returns to its accompaniment role that's at the very right. end. That's right, you have about three bars of codetta here where the chorale runs out and then of course, uh, well as you say, the, 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 the pedal uh, 
um, uh, becomes once again um, a, a, an accompanimental figure. So it's probably quite good at that point to do one of two things, either have a piston set up in order to take those reeds off, um, or to have an assistant um, do the very same so that the pedal line is less obtrusive to the end. Right, so should we just hear the yeah, I'll play you. The I'll end. play you into that, yeah. Thank you. 